Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have a very, very great guest today, an exciting guest that many of you have asked for over the years. He's been a pro bodybuilder. He's, he's made a big name for himself in bodybuilding. I haven't seen him in many years, but I've got Robbie Robinson. And Robbie, thrilled to have you here. I mean, so many people have asked, get Robbie on the show. <laughs> and, and you know, it's it, great. it is great. But, you know, I, 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 I contacted you a couple of times. I didn't hear back. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to give up. I heard. <laughs> so uh, here you are. You're, you're Rick, or uh, I think. You know, I remember something that you did for me, and you're going to forget. When we were training down at Gold's back in the 70s, I needed a lifting belt. And you said to me, I'm going out to, uh, to Weeder's office today. I'll bring you back one. Yeah, really? And you did. Uh -huh. The next day, he brought me a, a, a leather lifting Weeder belt, belt? And, yeah. I, and I still have it. <laughs> I still have it. That's great. I've saved everything over the years. Yeah. But let's, let's talk about something. How old were you when you first started in the bodybuilding? See up there jumping up and down was Jack LaLanne. And I sit there and I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. He was talking about health and fitness and nutrition and protein drinks. And I was sitting there listening to him and I noticed he had a show on. So I just started every morning I would get up and jump with Jack. Okay, so this is when you're 12 years old? Yeah. You started jumping, jumping with Jack LaLanne when you're 12 years old? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and it, it was interesting because, um, you know, your fitness and health wasn't that ongoing or as popular during that time period. No, it wasn't. It yeah. was just based on him and he was there jumping up and down every morning, doing all these things, and I started jumping with him. And from that point on, for some unknown reason, all that problem with the sickness just kind of depreciated. Well, what kind of sickness did you have? Well, you know, it, I had blood, a blood disorder, it's called thalassemia. Mm -hmm. It affects a lot of blacks, Mediterranean, from the islands. My parents' father was from the islands, so I think I must have, on his side, kind of got this blood disorder, which the, the blood suckles, cells are kind of shaped sickle. I see. And it's clogs and congested the blood uh, line of the blood uh, movement, so you don't get enough oxygen to the brain, and it can be fatal. Yeah. But at the same time, at that point, I didn't know it until I came out here, Doctor Walzak. Yeah. Or get a blood test on me and told me, say, hey, look, you got sickle cell anemia at that point, or thalassemia. Wow. And I just didn't think about it that much, and then I saw. Um, getting involved with you know with the uh, with bodybuilding and competing and then you know taking you know the anabolics and I, the first shot I took it was like you know I got very ill what'd you take Decker the Robin. oh Decker yeah. yeah and that's supposed to be mild yeah I took the Decker and I remember going home and as, as black as I am my skin is it just turned gray really? and I was shaking and I thought, like, holy smoke, what has happened? I had never gone through that kind of, I'd gone through it back at home, but not that severe. Right. And I said to myself, oh, man, that doesn't feel too good. And so um, I wound up coming out of it. And from that point on, I said to myself, and I noticed what was happening in bodybuilding. There was nothing there for the guys to really fall back on. Yeah. I said to myself, no, I can't go that lifestyle. I'm going to have to use, be regular as much as I possibly can and use whatever I'm going to use cut the dosages yeah and that's basically what I did did you, you didn't take a heavy dosage did you? no you don't need yeah, to I, take heavy. I, did, I don't think so Rick I think that's what has happened uh, over the time period you know the guys think more is better bigger is better and to yeah. me I think it's more toward artisticness of the body how you it's shape so it, right build that thought the physique with the muscles that you have right. and you're supposed to look like a piece of art exactly that's how I always saw bodybuilding and I thought it was developing the muscle groups so that the muscle groups would look Beautiful. Yes, yeah, and you stand on yes, you stand on stage under the lights. Yeah. Then that gives you another five pounds anyway. That's what yes, I always thought. So you come out of that, you're looking bigger on stage than you normally would if you were really taking the you know the, the heavy doses of antibiotics. Yeah, you know back in those days, less was really more. No one took a lot. No, didn't have to. We, I mean, we, we we worked so hard. I mean, on developing and shaping that physique that when you did stand up on that stage, you look bigger. Right. Then you normally would look. Because oh, you're cut, you've got the lights, and you've got the shadows, and you got everything that falls yeah. into it. Yeah. Your training back then um, was uh, how many days a week did you work each body part? Oh, we were training them. Uh, we were training three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. That one day off was important. Wasn't that was very important. That's you know you basically want to fuel that body. You know you're gonna definitely eat all that meat and potatoes and rice right. and right. veggies and stuff to keep that body up there. And, and uh, you know, keep that muscle tissue there for you to, to grow bigger, to become stronger. How many sets of body part, because people want to know what, mm -hmm. what you did back then. Mm -hmm. uh, how many sets of body part did you do? We were doing 20 sets of body part. You were, And yeah. I still kind of feel it that way. 
17 to 15. Oh, you got to do it, Rick, yeah. because that's the only way I really think that you can, like, really build that body. You can't build the body with chump chain sense. You got to go in there and work that muscle. I know. And you're thinking back at, all, you know, and posing a lot. We really, really work on that posing because that really creates and shapes the muscles and give you that ecstatic look when you come out there all pumped up. Absolutely. I've mentioned that before in my show that, that posing, it's almost like an isometric yeah, movement. It's isometric muscle. movement. Isometric. It shapes the muscle. It, it shapes creates the muscle. It, it, it turns it into something bigger because posing harder than working out. Actually. Yeah. Very much so. You know, I always thought back in the day when, you know, when Arnold was training for his Olympia and uh, yeah, I was training for the world. I remember we were all just standing there in pools of our own sweat, of each other's sweat, posing after each workout for 45 minutes. And then when you really saw all hit a side chest, you were really thrown yeah. back yeah. by it yeah. because of all that shape and hard work and the posing. And, you know, 20 sets, I really think that's the essence of bodybuilding. Yeah, and yeah. 20 sets twice a week? Yeah, twice a week. Did you ever do three times a week? Sometimes you would, you know, you got to be a little bit, <laughs> you got to go in there and be a little bit um, overbearing, you know. I do, I do it sometimes. You know, because back even before then, back in the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. the routines for a lot of the guys like Steve Reeves and that was three times a week. Yeah. Everything was three times a week and yeah. then they'd, take, they'd train maybe three days a week and then mm -hmm. three days off. Yep. And they got good bodies doing it. Oh, yeah. And they weren't the drugs back then. I mean, they had some, but they didn't go to any extreme mm -hmm. with them. Uh, and it was all about diet, mm -hmm. and your diet back in the 70s was basically high protein, low carb, right? Sure. Like we we did. didn't really, you know, if I, if I could really think back, I remember we would go and train sometime, we wouldn't even have breakfast. We just go in the gym and train over what we had in our body. We was in there for the love of the game. Exactly. We busting butt every day, screaming and hollering at each other, Kenny Waller challenging on the dumbbells, you got all challenging on the leg extension, yeah. you got Eddie Jr. looking over there doing abs for days, him and Z, I mean, him and yeah. Chief. Yeah. So, you know, you just, you wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. Not being a warrior, gladiator. That's funny. You brought, you talked about Chief Zabo. I had a dream about him last night. I was going to tell you uh -huh. that he was, you know, he passed away, and I had a dream. He came back, mm -hmm. and we sat down, and I started talking to him and, and trying to get information about all, all the things he'd done through the years mm -hmm. because I didn't get a chance to talk to him before he mm -hmm. passed away for mm -hmm. years because mm -hmm. he had a lot of knowledge. Oh, yeah. He had a lot of yeah. knowledge. Him and Eddie, you know, I'm a partner. Well, Eddie I'm is, sorry. Eddie, I just, <laughs> I was with Eddie two weeks ago. Eddie's a man. Yeah. He's just the funniest guy. Oh, he's so funny. I, I dropped by on his way from the gym several times to speak with him. Yeah. He's doing good. He's great. Yeah, he's doing real yeah. well. He had a tough one when his wife passed away. Yeah. But he, uh, he goes to the gym every morning at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I said, why do you go at 5 o'clock? You're 80 years old. He says, that's the time I go. I'm yeah. used to it. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, it works for him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, things change over the years. Mm -hmm. And I go down to Goals in Venice now. Mm -hmm. And it's just not the same thing. It's not the same. No, it's changed Rick, because it's, you know, you got a new breed of guys in there. And, um... They come in there often, but you know they just don't really seem to have that. Um, no disrespect to them, that charisma that the guys have. I mean, we used to have people at the windows. Yeah. People be standing there peeping, cameras going off, and it was just like in a whole other world. It was. Yeah. And it was I a whole other world. I had talked about because back in the day there was charisma. There was you, and there was mm -hmm. Arnold, and, and there was Waller, and there mm -hmm. was Eddie, and there was Frank, and mm -hmm. there was Columbo. Mm -hmm. Everybody, when you lined them up, they all looked different. Yeah. And they all had a different personality. But yeah. They all had a personality. Yeah. And and that's what put bodybuilding on the map. You'll yep. never see that again. Yep. And it, it, was, it was beautiful to watch and be a part of. And I remember first coming in and sitting by the door because I had befriended Denny, uh, Denny Gable at this yeah. point. And um, Denny said, well, you ought to come down and check it out. So I would come down, uh, check it out, sit by the door and watch them train. And then I remember, I guess, he must have talked over with Arm because him and Arm were training the partners in, uh, at Corny. Right. And they welcomed me in, you know. And I thought, like, whoa. I'm here with the big boy. <laughs> I thought it was like the most incredible thing to be able to work with those guys and just not really question, but just, just observe what they were doing. Yeah. You know, you can learn a lot by it too. Well, you can, you know, and, and you, you see it in magazines, and mm -hmm. I did before I came down here. I mm -hmm. came down in 69, mm -hmm. and, and the next thing I know, mm -hmm. I'm in the gym training with them, and we become one of them. Oh, yeah. And everybody's just like equal. Everybody's just on the same page, and mm -hmm. we hang out together, and we go to the yeah. beach. And, we and the eat magazine. together, lay yeah. on the beach together. It was just like... Yeah. Fun time. You don't see you don't see that today. <laughs> no. I think it's you know, the money aspect of it, the, the competitiveness of it and you got so many more competitors now. Yeah. Yeah. I was recently talking to Wayne the Million, he was saying you got like two, three hundred competitors. Yeah. That's a lot of competitors to to uh, you know, go in there and have a be able to compete for competition. There's a certain number of competitions, but at the same time, uh you still hear the guys complaining, you know, it's not enough money, it's not enough money. And it's it's difficult 
to kind of feed all that. Yeah. I, I feel for them, but it's difficult to kind of feed all the guys that are there that really probably have a great love for the game, but it's difficult to get, to get into that door. Well, it's 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 a love. It's it's a love of a game. And it's a it's a love of a, a labor of love because mm -hmm. it's not always a reward for somebody at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like pro wrestling. I did it for forty years. Mm -hmm. I made money at it. There's a lot of guys who don't make money at it, mm -hmm. but they love it and they'll do it for free. Oh yeah. Or they'll pay a promoter twenty bucks to be on the show. Oh yeah. Because it's what they want to do. Yeah, right. It's just like when we came in there, but that was not a lot of money. No. People don't have to understand that it wasn't a lot of money. The only really cash prize show was the uh, was the uh, Olympia. Right. You only had a thousand dollars for that. All won that for six years in a row. Right. And um, the rest of it was just really a lot of love for the game. You want to really put it out there. Want to be the very best that you can be. And you, you got leaders. You got all. You got Kenny Waller. You got Eddie. You got Zappo. Yeah. So you got Ed Coyne. You know, you got all these people there that you can actually learn from. So right. I was right in the middle of all that learning. Well, the thing, thing with that is, is that if you're smart and within bodybuilding, like I'll, we'll talk about this, mm -hmm. you take your knowledge and what you've gained and mm -hmm. the titles you've gained, and you turn mm -hmm. it into a business. On the outside of it, yeah, you, you take it that a lot of guys don't know how to do that. And Difficult. A lot of guys in pro wrestling, and once they're done, they get injured. They don't know what to do. I mean, I opened a wrestling school because I knew I had the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I could make money with students, yeah. you know, and pass on my knowledge. Mm -hmm. With bodybuilding, uh, I was there, but then I started this show and mm -hmm. bring back the seventies, and people want to see it. Oh, cool. You know, and this is what it's all about. Now you've got some. These are DVDs or books. Yeah, I have a. a my first DVD was is called Built. It did um, won a, a Remy at the Houston Film Festival. And I was like really proud about that. And, and, what, and what is it? What's this about? On this it's just about myself, you know, about the whole bodybuilding lifestyle, my showing my training and showing my um, the technique and stuff that I use to maintain my physique even today. Now okay. I'm 65, and it talks about bodybuilding. It's a lot of it's down on the beach, around the pit, at uh, gyms, uh, my training and uh, my whole philosophy about bodybuilding. Oh, great! That's excellent. Mm -hmm. And That's then um, um, Arden and I put together. Um, She's like the business rep and handle all these, uh, the business part of the thing. We develop master's class, which okay. I have a master's class where people come to train with me and work with me for four days. Where is this? In, in Venice, California. In Venice, California, yeah. okay. Uh, we've now switched over to gold because there's a lot more value in it there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah, so you got a lot more people want to come and train the goals and take the pictures at the thing and right. uh, be seen at goals, go to the firehouse and eat. I can take them to the different markets. Uh, you know, help them, uh, you know, acclimate them to the real bodybuilding lifestyle. Exactly. And we've been booked from like April to probably what almost September, October, November. With clients coming Excellent. from all over the world. And so they're training with you at Gold. Yeah. Oh yeah. All that, they got so oh much yeah. equipment Definitely. to work with. And then I just came out with the book, yeah. which has been a smash, <laughs> The Black Prince. Perfect. Uh, Robert Robinson, Muscle versus Hustle. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a T-shirt for you, and uh, it's. Uh, Fourteen ninety five. You can go and also get the ebook. Okay. Uh, you can just come to my site www.robbyrobinson.net. Okay. I'll and uh, you know, go in and press ebook or and press book the the book with the diamond on it, yeah. and you can get either book or you can order it. On I think the ebook's a good idea. Yeah. I just started yeah. doing that with some we've, we've, we've had quite a few people come in for that ebook and do that, and read it online, and you know, gave us giving us reviews, and with uh, Arden, who's like really the business manager, she's kind of sent out a, a letter to. Barnes and Nobles, mm -hmm. and you got to kind of like wait six weeks. So we just got the letter from Barnes and Noble, and they're going to take it. Oh, I'm <laughs> that's, that's, that's so that's I can't complain. Everything. No, is, that's a step in the right everything direction. Everything is going great. You know. This is really, really good stuff. Yeah. Um, there, are people are going to ask it. How did you get such a peak on your bicep back then? We could have really. It's been doing a lot of uh, close grip curls. I put a lot of emphasis on those close grip curls. I do a lot of uh, Scott bench curls off an incline bench more so so that it affects the bicep more and I believe in actually wait wait what do you mean off the incline you know you, how you raise the bench on the incline right. and I kind of like just l lean forward get it into an upper back arch so it doesn't place as much stress on that area yeah. which really forces the bicep to work harder so you're leaning face down on the incline pretty much but with an upper back arch I'm kind of like that stand, yeah. and curl into that point with the dumbbell to get, yeah with, no with a barbell oh, with a barbell great bar and, and sometimes I do it with a dumbbell when I get closer to the competition so you can isolate it. How do you do?